And with that out of the way, we can go right into this second segment, hopefully with fewer coughs and sneezes, and talk about Anthony Edwards and the Timberwolves winning this, um, winning this game. <coughs> Already off to a great start with the coughs. <laughs> but Timberwolves ended up stealing game one against the Denver Nuggets, which, like, it really shocked me. I did not expect Denver to lose in, um, to lose in game one of, of this series. And especially with Denver playing at home, did not really expect this whatsoever. And it was really, like, this game, like, the win, it was all because of, it was all because of Anthony Edwards. Throughout the entirety of the game, Ant was keeping the Timberwolves alive. It wasn't like he had a little bit... He wasn't like he had a quick stretch on, like, um, in one quarter, and it amounted to this amount of points towards the end of the game. He was doing this consistently, like, throughout the entirety of this game. He was a monster at, um, at scoring the ball. 43 points... 12 for 29 from the field, no, 17 of 29 from the field, excuse me, Um, 3 for 7 from 3, 6 for 6 from the line, and he also added up, he also added 7 rebounds and 3 assists to that total, along with 2 blocks and a steal, so there's now a lot, there's, Ant is getting a lot more attention now in, um, in the NBA, mainly because, like, after sweeping Phoenix and, um, like, with KD, Bradley Beal, and D-Book, and beating Denver in Game 1, he's been getting a lot of hype around Twitter, around all sorts of social media outlets. Like, they're they're calling him the next MJ and, like, the next Kobe. Part of that is, like, you know, partly because um, Anthony Edwards looks like Michael Jordan. Like, if you put them... If you've seen that, that picture of the side-by-side -side with the faces... Like, they look really, really identical. And, excuse me, but it's not only the fact that they look identical, it's the fact that their play styles are also rather stim uh, similar. Similar. The, um, Anthony Edwards, he relies a lot, um, he relies a lot on, like, the mid-range shot, the post, and he has a three ball. He doesn't really use it that often. He is also known as a really good dunker, which was something that MJ was really good at, in case you guys don't know. And, again, his post game and that post fadeaway, it was getting a lot of Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan comparisons. And not say, obviously, like, comparisons and, like, just play style alone, because there's no way that you can compare Michael Jordan or Kobe Bryant to Anthony Edwards right now. It's just, there's no way that Ant can even match up to either of those two greats whatsoever. But... <clears throat> Excuse me. Depending on how his career goes, however, maybe maybe we'll see that happen. And Ant is definitely he's one of those he's very he's a very special he's a very special athlete. He he's honestly like he's he's an extremely likable athlete as well. He's competitive. He's um what else is he? There's a lot of there's a lot of things that he does good that I just can't um that I just can't name off the top of my head. He's unselfish, that's another thing. He's also like he talks his he talks the talk. Again, I guess that might fall under the competitiveness. Um he has that he's he has that dog in him. What else is he good at? And he's 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 funny. That's another thing. Actually, in um when I was held up in the meeting earlier, we um we started calling him or somebody called him the the happy Kobe Bryant because all Anthony Edwards does is smile and his but his play style is exactly like Kobe his um his game is sort of like similar to Kobe his build is similar to Kobe his play style is similar to Kobe and the one thing work ethic as well is also similar to Kobe and the confidence as well also similar to Kobe the one th difference though is that Kobe don't smile <laughs> I mean he does but like not as much as Anthony Edwards does, especially not on the court. Like, I don't think, I don't remember Kobe ever smiling on the court, like, in any given moment unless something funny actually happens. Like, he never smiles. In the game, he is fully locked in, mama mentality, all the way. 
and that sort of competitiveness and that attitude that he has. And one another thing that is really overlooked, um, at least with a lot of other athletes, is how they treat their fans. And Anthony Edwards is one of the most, again, like I said, he's one of the most unselfish players in the NBA. He has that same mentality that Michael Jordan had where he doesn't like sitting out in any games. Same with Kobe as well, who also didn't like sitting out in any games. If he's able to play, he's going to try to play because there are fans in the in the stands there that literally bought the tickets, probably couldn't afford to buy any more tickets other than that one just to watch him play. And if he's not out there, he feels like he's letting he's letting the fans down and he's doing a disservice as an athlete. And that's a very, very overlooked aspect of athletes in, in the league right now, how they interact with the fans and how they treat the fans and how they how often they go to these games. Because it's like with previously, like before the um, 65 game requirements, making more players want to play more games. A lot of them would decide to load manage, and that would honestly kill the mood of any fan that was expecting to watch Kawhi, LeBron, Steph, Kevin Durant, Kyrie, James Harden, Paul George, all of those guys that like really like to load manage. Jimmy Butler as well. Like they all like to they all like to load manage and they all like to sit out, but like the fans they're missing out on one of the biggest reasons as to why they purchased their tickets. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> it's getting worse and worse. It's not even funny. But yeah, that's sort of my that's sort of my opinion on Anthony Edwards. He's a great guy and at least from on the surface again, I don't know him personally, so and this this series it just really shows like how confident he is and like what he's really capable of and how good this Minnesota team is in the matchups against the against the Nuggets. Now Jokic he ended the game with 32 9 and 8 and um, 9 assists and 8 rebounds and excuse me 11 for 25 from the field. Now the Timberwolves they have a lot of big men. That means their rotations won't be as messed up when they have to focus on guarding Nikola Jokic. Because Rudy Gobert can go ahead and play help, or Carl Anthony Towns can also play help, or Nas Reed can even play help. Like, they could play some kind of help defense that makes it a little bit difficult for Nikola Jokic to be able to thrive in the offense. And this was, a, it's a similar strategy that the Lakers pulled in the bubble in 2020 when they were going up against Denver, having Anthony Davis and Dwight Howard in the same, like, in the same rotation and in the same lineup, and it ended up working, and they ended up getting gentlemen's, they ended up getting, uh, they ended up losing the series, well, the, the Nuggets, they ended up losing the series 4-1, to one. and obviously, when you, when you see, like, the match, like, the playoffs are all about matchups, like, that is the most important thing in the playoffs. It's all about matchups. And the Timberwolves, they have the right matchups for this Nuggets team. So there is a possibility that they could make it that they could make it past this juggernaut of a team. However, it is only game one, so I don't want to say that the series is already over, obviously, because that would just be super delusional if I were to say that the series is over. <coughs> Excuse me. I cannot control the coughing, and it's really, really annoying. But Michael Porter Jr., he ended the game 6 of 13 from the field for um, 20 points. Jamal Murray ended the game 6 for 14 for 17 points. Aaron Gordon ended 4 for 6 from the field with 9 points. And <clears throat> the team shot 41% from 3. Like, it was really... It was really a good game from both from both teams. It's just Anthony Edwards was the driving force to will this team to get that win. And will it happen again? I mean, the likelihood of a of Anthony Edwards or anyone dropping back to back to back to back to back 40 point games like how he's doing, it's very unlikely. 
So we'll see how it um how game two is going to play out because I I don't think that I don't think that if the I completely forgot what I was going to say because I thought I was going to sneeze. <laughs> That's embarrassing. But I don't think that the Timberwolves could like they could definitely win the series and but I don't think they'll like immediately lose out the rest of the four games that they have or like the rest of the five games depending on how many games that they have. And I also like I see this if Anthony Edwards doesn't drop as many points as he does in this game, they end up losing. So I have a I have a slight feeling that this series might come down to Anthony Edwards and how often he's able to score and how often he's able to drop 40, similar to how the Knicks are with Jalen Brunson, where they need Brunson to drop 40 in order to really have a chance. I mean, granted, there were some time, granted there were some like moments where he didn't have to drop 40, but it's like you guys understand what I mean. You have to drop an absurd amount of points as the um, as the star player on the team, and you're expected to win on to win in the series by doing so. And now that might put a lot of pressure on Ant. Granted, he's extremely confident, so he might not even feel that pressure. However, if the series is going to rely on him scoring, then it's like the rest of the players have to pick up the slack. I mean, Jaden McDaniels ended the game 0 for 7 from the field and with zero points. And he was starting. And he played 39 minutes. Like, Pick up the points. Pick up the pace. You were averaging. Well, you outplayed Kevin. He outplayed Kevin Durant in one game, and after that, he just no zero points. Obviously, that wasn't helping the team. But a win is a win is a win, and they're going to take it. So that's basically like all I really have for. Um, actually, you know what? I I can keep going. So, I mean, the story of the game was really like. It was sort of back and forth. I mean, Denver did have a pretty nice lead, like a nice lead. I'm not saying it was like a huge lead, but just a nice lead. And then Anthony Edwards just started making shot after shot. And I'm like, this guy is really not missing. Like this team, like the Timberwolves are struggling, yet Ant is keeping them in the game single-handedly, it felt. Like that same aura was why a lot of people think Michael Jordan is the GOAT. Because Michael Jordan back then, he would will his team into these good playoff scenarios with his ridiculous scoring, similar to how Anthony Edwards is doing that here. So with that, we are out of time for this second segment. So now I'll be going into the third segment where I talk about the Cavs and the Magic series, both game six and game seven. So I will be right back after this short break. Looking for your daily fix of sports talk without having to pay for it? GSMC Sports Network is available on YouTube. Just search GSMC Sports Network. Get your fix of daily sports talk shows on YouTube absolutely free. NFL, college football, NBA, MLB, MMA, UFC, fantasy football, and so much more. GSMC Sports Network has shows running all day long with new sports shows starting every two hours. Just like on your favorite cable sports channel, except GSMC Sports Network is absolutely free. Just search GSMC Sports Network on YouTube to catch one of your new favorite shows, like the GSMC College Football Podcast, Chip Shot Football Podcast, Hoops and Heels Women's Sports Podcast, GSMC Basketball Podcast, and so many more. Check it out for yourself. GSMC Sports Network, now available on YouTube absolutely free. Search GSMC Sports Network on YouTube right now. 